Hello everyone, how are you going? Karen Finnan here, physiotherapist and director of online.physio. So today we're continuing our Then and Now series where we compare injury management from 1950 with what it is today. And we are of course guided in that process by the Universal Home Doctor, which is a health uh, manual that was published in 1950. So we are up to the letter J in our alphabet. And so today we're gonna to be talking about joints. What did they think about those in 1950? And is it still accurate today? Let's find out. Joints. Joints or articulations in the body are formed when two bones or cartilages meet. The joints of the body are divided into two groups, the fixed joints, which have no power of movement, and the movable joints. Okay, so far so good. So this is true, although there are not many completely fused or fixed joints in the body, but uh, yeah, there are certainly both. So let's see what else they got to say. Fixed joints are those like the joints between the bones of the skull and the vertebra of the spine, where there's a layer of cartilage between the two bones binding them together, but not permitting movement to any noticeable extent. In the spine, the result of a long series of little bones with flexible cartilage joints between them is to make the whole spine slightly flexible, but this is not true movement. Okay, so this is amazing that they have classified the joints in the spine into the fixed joints category. I don't agree with this at all. The joints in the spine are very movable and mobile. That's what allows us to bend and twist and move. And as physios, we spend a lot of time managing issues with the movement in the joints in our spine. So they've got it really wrong here in 1950, unfortunately. There's nothing fixed about the joints in the spine. In fact, we want them all to be as mobile as possible so that our movement is free. Joints are very subject to injury and strains and dislocations are very frequent. These injuries always require careful treatment as once infection gets into the cavity of a joint is it very difficult to treat it and serious illness may be the result and perhaps the permanent stiffening of the joint. Okay, so this is really interesting when they're talking about injuries to the joints, their follow-up uh, concern is that the infection will take over the joint. Now, as long as the skin remains closed around the joint, it's inflammation that's usually a problem. It's certainly not infection. Now, understandably in 1950, uh, there were probably more infections that were a problem. Um, certainly if you'd opened the skin, that, that can be a portal for infection to come in. But in general, just spraining or straining a joint certainly doesn't introduce infection into the joint at all. It's a matter of managing inflammation and managing a return to move movement and reducing pain, but certainly not dealing with infection. So that's a big turnaround from 1950. All right, so that's their theory on joints. There's a few uh, misguided thoughts there. Uh, lucky we've turned those around to be where we are today. I hope you found that interesting, guys. I look forward to catching you next time.